Hi there. Welcome to That's English. Today's documentary looks at the hopes and dreams of 12-year-old children. It compares a 1969 survey about children's ambitions with a recent survey. Some children have realistic ambitions, while others have more outlandish or unusual aspirations. You'll hear the word apprenticeship, which means learning how to do a job from a skilled employer while earning a little money. As you watch the documentary, see if you can answer this question. What are the most popular career choices for young people these days? When I grow up, I'm going to be a footballer and play for West Ham. Or maybe I might be a doctor. When I grow up, I want to be an astronaut. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. When I grow up, I want to write stories about wizards. When I grow up, I want to design new football boots. Children are surrounded by media images of celebrities. So it's easy to believe that all kids today want to grow up to be pop stars or footballers. But a recent survey by the British retail chain Mothercare revealed 10% of today's children wanted to become doctors and only 1% dreamt of becoming stars. The survey asked kids up to the age of 12 years old about their hopes and dreams. Many wanted to become police officers, firefighters and nurses. And most children believed helping others was more important than being rich and famous. Children's ambition is closely linked to the culture and society of their time. Back in 1969, thousands of 11-year-olds were also asked what they hoped to be when they grew up. Professor Jane Elliott has been studying these essays. The great majority of the children who wrote essays were very realistic. So perhaps about a quarter of the boys imagined having skilled manual jobs. They imagined being builders, electricians, firemen. A few of them had quite outlandish um, aspirations. The girls were also very realistic about their aspirations and many of them were also very aware that they would need to combine the world of work with their family lives. Many of the girls wanted to be teachers, about 15% of them wanted to be teachers, another 10% wanted to be nurses and quite a number wanted to be hairdressers. Again, a number of them had outlandish aspirations. Some wanted to be models, for example. Nowadays, I expect children would have a rather different set of aspirations, which might include jobs in technology. Today, only one in 11 British adults are in the career they'd hoped for as a child. When I was young, I wanted to be a train driver, but I ended up being an electronics engineer. When I was young, I wanted to be an air hostess. Now I'm grown up, I'm on the picture desk for a national newspaper. When I was younger, I wanted to be a nurse, and now I'm grown up, I'm an administrator. Trudy Nato is a careers advisor with the government's National Careers Service. Her job is to help young people turn their dreams into reality. I think there are certain aspects which uh, contribute to them making their career decisions. Um, I think parents can influence and you often find that a child is considering a career because either their parent or auntie or uncle are already in that industry. We asked her what the most popular career choices are for young people. Some of the most popular career choices are uh, IT. There's been a, a great increase in the amount of apprenticeships that are on offer at the moment and we're finding that a lot of young people are really taking these options and enjoying the thoughts of uh, being a plumber or electrician, um, a carpenter. Uh, we've got all sorts of extremes from being a doctor or an accountant through to being a tattoo artist, dancing, taxi drivers, so it's really broad so they can uh, really can choose their future options and really find out a lot of information. So, will these children's hopes and dreams ever come true? So, family can influence a child's career choice. If your father or mother's an actor, 
you might become one too. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear that children's ambitions are closely linked to the culture and society of the time. Which brings us to our question. What are the most popular career choices for young people these days? Some of the most popular career choices are uh, IT. There's been a, a great increase in the amount of apprenticeships that are on offer at the moment and we're finding that a lot of young people are really taking these options and enjoying the thoughts of uh, being a plumber or electrician, um, a carpenter. So, IT, or information technology, is popular and many young people are choosing to do an apprenticeship to become, for example, an electrician, a carpenter or a plumber, fontanero. We also asked our international friends, what kind of ambitions and dreams do young people have in your country? You'll hear that some young people strive or work hard to know more. You'll also hear the initials PR, which stand for Public Relations. In New Zealand today, young people really want to work in China and in Japan. They look east for their ambitions and for their business contacts. So everybody wants to make it big in the world of finance or in the world of IT today. Young people in America, I think, would like to be successful in their careers, um, to have creative fulfillment in their lifetime. Um, to have close friends and family and to build a very comfortable life. Um, young people strive um, to become more knowledgeable, so therefore um, their ambition is to go to university and get a degree in the career that they pursue. A lot of people want to be movie stars because it's a huge film industry. Um, and I think business is a big thing, like international business and finance, and everyone wants to be in PR as well. Lots of young uh, children or teenagers, their dreams would be within the acting or singing, music industry, as well as sport. Most of the people, they would like to be like in a Bollywood. And the cricket is quite the other one, because if you are a cricketer, you're like a demigod in India. Most of the people go with the, being a scientist, doctor, engineer. So these are the more common dreams which you hear across you know, while you're growing up. So, several people mentioned that young people want to work in business and finance. And in Canada and India, many young people dream of being film stars. Right. It's time to watch That's Britain. Today, Alex visits Blackpool. Blackpool is a seaside resort, which means it's a place where people go on holiday. It's very popular with both children and adults. As you watch, answer this question. What are Blackpool's main attractions? <laughs> Welcome to the seaside town of Blackpool. Now Blackpool has a rich history dating back to the Vikings and Anglo-Saxon times, but the real identity of Blackpool only emerged halfway through the 18th century when sea bathing became fashionable to cure health problems and this became a popular destination spot for families. <laughs> Blackpool continues to be the most popular seaside resort in the United Kingdom today. During the holiday period, it's a lively town. Tourists visit every year to enjoy the beaches and take part in the city's many amusements and attractions. Blackpool is a giant playground for both kids and adults. Let's see what it has to offer. I'm at the top of the Blackpool Tower, the most iconic attraction in the centre of town, overlooking the promenade. Now the tower stands 158.12 metres tall and is made of steel. Does it remind you of any other famous tower? That's right, the Eiffel Tower. Okay. 
I'm here with Helen, who works at the Blackpool Tower. Helen, what can you tell us about the history of the Blackpool Tower? Uh, well, the history of the Blackpool Tower is that it was built in 1894. Uh, we are celebrating our 120th anniversary this year. It was built by Sir John Bickerstaff, and he travelled to Paris, saw the Eiffel Tower, and decided he wanted his very own home in Blackpool. In the past, what did Blackpool represent to working people? Well, Blackpool represented so much, regardless of whether you were a worker in Blackpool or you travelled to Blackpool, it was the place to be and it was buzzing throughout many, many years. So what are your hopes for Blackpool's future? I hope it just continues to be what it is, a perfect, wonderful holiday site for all the family. Well, Helen, thank you very much. It's summertime in our little town, there's sunny faces all around me, summertime, oh, oh, oh. This sculpture is the high tide organ. It's been described as a musical manifestation of the sea. When the tide is high, a series of eight pipes attached to the sea wall allow it to make sound. And now to one of Blackpool's best love attractions, the Pleasure Beach. This famed amusement park is located by the South Pier and as you can see, it's a very popular and lively place. <laughs> Jordan and Shani who are here at the Pleasure Beach. Guys, what are you here to do today? Come on loads to the right and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and how long are you here for? Uh, till Thursday. So have you been here for a few days? Yeah. Yeah, since Sunday. And what other things have you done here in Blackpool? Um, we went to Madame Tussauds and we've been to the Tower, so just go to some more amusements, spend some money. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy this fabulous weather. Okay, well guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. It's summertime in our little town, there's sunny faces all around me. Summertime, oh, oh, oh. trip to Blackpool would be complete without some of this. Blackpool Rock and Candy Floss, both full of sugar and terrible for your teeth, but they taste delicious. I'll see you next time in Nottingham. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if the weather in Blackpool is always as sunny as that. I doubt it. <laughs> Have you answered the question, what are Blackpool's main attractions? The main attractions are the beach, Blackpool Tower, the high tide organ and the amusement park called the Pleasure Beach. What about the roller coaster? Do you like going on it? Yes, I love it. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. I hope you enjoyed the trip to Blackpool. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.